ultimately, I still think that we could go as low as 12,000. 12,000 is this pivot going back to 2019. Um, one of the reasons why I think you could go that low, there's actually a few. Number one is it's a measured move. Hello everyone, today our guest is Gareth Soloway. Gareth Soloway is a pro trader, having experience of 20 years in trading. He is the founder of In The Money Stocks, as well as Verified Investing Crypto. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about his previous prediction about Bitcoin, the price action lies ahead of major cryptocurrencies in Bitcoin, the Fed strategies and more pain and bloodbath or recovery, what will be the short-term result after this crash. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. The carnage in the crypto market has gathered pace with no near-term respite in sight. Considering the latest slide, investors have lost over $2 trillion over eight months. The total market capitalization of the digital market is marginally above the $1 trillion mark, which was more than $3 trillion at its peak in November 2021. Bitcoin, the largest crypto token, is barely above the $25,000 level. It has dropped more than 20% over the weekend, with its market cap slipping below $500 billion or half a trillion. Its largest peer, Ethereum, has barely managed to hold the $1,300 mark, with total valuation just above $160 billion. Both the tokens are down about 70% from their peaks. Bitcoin's dominance in the total market cap has been about 47.25%, which shows that all coins are left with value worth merely a few billion dollars. Market participants are linking the weakness in the crypto market closely with the traditional asset class. You know, anything that's not made to be on a firm foundation, ultimately in bear markets, it's shown to be faulty, right? So now we're seeing Celsius. I think they're, they're not allowing withdrawals right now, which is sending shockwaves. I mean, that's the equivalent in the crypto space of in, in the financial system if a bank said, hey, you can't withdraw your money. I mean, that is not a good thing. Well, here's um, so a bigger I, one. So the latest shooter drop is Binance. Binance now has locked up withdrawals and not allowing people to uh, take their Bitcoin off the exchange. Yeah, the, the one positive, and again, this could change, but the one positive I heard is that it was just based on some sort of glitch and that within 30 minutes, supposedly it was gonna be fixed. If that's the case, that would be a positive. If it's not, then you're seeing Bitcoin going much, much lower. I mean, if this is an isolated Celsius incident, that's one thing. If it becomes something that many of these other crypto brokers have, then that's really, really bad. But I'll, I will tell you this, what we're seeing today in the price action is what I would consider blood in the crypto streets, which is just the same as blood in the Wall Street, kind of Wall Street period. This is where I start saying, OK, for a short term bounce, it is starting to be likely. And again, it's scary, but you have to just kind of keep out the emotion and focus on the chart. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And what you can see here is that there's this little interim support right over here at around 23,000 or so. And that's kind of what we've been dangling right on, on top of. So that's your short-term support on Bitcoin. Uh, I ultimately still am holding strong that I think at, at the high end of a target, you're talking about this 20,000 marker here. So I still think we're going there. But again, generally, you don't go straight to these levels. It's very rare to see a collapse from where we were, you know, at 32,000 or 31,000 a few days ago or a week ago down to 20,000 that quickly. Usually you get to a level, you bounce a little bit, then you flush again. Um, ultimately, I still think that we could go as low as 12,000. 12,000 is this pivot going back to 2019. Um, one of the reasons why I think you could go that low, there's actually a few. Number one is it's a measured move. So if you take this distance from this high to this low, which was basically a straight shot down, and then you do a measured move that same distance from here, let me zoom out, from here, it takes you down to 12,000. This would be the same distance repeating, which again, in technical analysis, it's called a measured move. It's some of the symmetry of, a ch of, of stocks and charts and crypto. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that 12,000 also is the 80 to 85 correction move, which is a standard kind of Bitcoin crypto winter, right? So again, 20,000 is my high end. That's where I so start kind of accumulating a hodl position where I, I plan to hold it for a little bit longer. But what I'll do is I'll divide my ultimate 
max that I want to buy into about five portions. So let's just say for for Pete's for for example, say it's twenty, it's a hundred thousand dollars. I would do twenty thousand at at, at twenty thousand, um, and then at maybe seventeen thousand, another twenty thousand dollars worth, et cetera, all the way down. So again, there's lots of ways here. I'm still a long term huge bull. This is kind of exactly what I was expecting. It's the dot com flush out. You need to see ninety five percent of cryptos honestly go away during this next one to two year period. Um, it's why I've, I've said so many times when I invest in cryptos, I generally only invest in the top 20 because the top 20 hopefully will still be around to tell the tale, just like Amazon back in the dot coms. Obviously that one flourished afterwards, but I mean, it is it is nuts out there. There's no doubt about it. It is, it is painfully nutty out there and investors, don't use leverage. I mean, that's just the bottom line. You know, you use leverage in a bear market, you're going to get slaughtered. So again, basically below a thousand, I really start to think that there's good value here. If if you can say a cryptocurrency has value, um, no one thought it would go here. I mean, we were almost at five thousand dollars. So at a thousand dollars, you're basically down eighty percent on Ethereum, and we're getting awfully close to that trading at twelve twenty five right now. So yes, it is nasty, but again, if you're someone that is has that long-term vision and you're not using leverage and you're trying to build a long-term accumulation portfolio then you start to nibble you start to nibble just a little bit and you kind of say okay listen i understand that these positions could go down 50 percent. that's just the crypto market right um even from here but if you have that view of long term then there's a lot more reward down the line on these good quality names everyone wants the big player I mean, it's so funny right you know you see and this has always been kind of the double-edged sword for crypto. It's like no one wants it to be, you know, everyone wants it to be decentralized. No one wants these big institutions to control so much of it. But then when you get in a bear market, everyone's like, oh my goodness, I hope the institutions come out and save the day. And it's like, well, in this environment, like you said, the institutions are not, this is this is beyond their risk tolerance, right? Yeah. They, they, they're already cutting back risks by selling Tesla and selling some of these tech stocks. They're not gonna come in into something that's dropping by 20% a day and step in at these levels. Now, at some level, hedge funds who, who really do take risks like that, they will step in, but they wait for you know the absolute collapse. You know, they'll they'll wait on Bitcoin to sub 20,000, probably even sub 15, like you're saying, before they step in. Like, so I've been nibbling on Bitcoin down here and I've been nibbling on Ethereum down here as we're getting to these kind of crazy over short, short uh, sold short term levels. You know, some of the things that I, I'm intrigued by is you have something called a time count here, which is two, four, six, seven straight down days in a row. If you look at charts, they tend to bounce after if you get seven red candles or seven green candles in a row, you tend to get a short term reversal in trend. Um, it may only be short term, but for me as a swing trader, that's an opportunity. But again, what I'm doing here is I'm not like betting the farm, right? And people are just so insane when they do this, especially in a bear market. When you're going counter trend to the market, you you literally dip that toe in the water. You know, so so you're talking about, you know, 4%, 2% of my portfolio, what I'm putting at risk initially, and then maybe I'll add another two or 4%, but, but you're not going like 10 times leverage in praying and hoping that this is the bottom because that's how you go broke in a bear market and again things have changed investors have to understand that the days of 2021 are now gone because the fed has said sorry guys we are not continuing to print money and the government is in that same position you know you don't have enough people saying okay let's do this spending bill or this spending bill and so all of a sudden the spigot's been cut off and the market's kind of left naked, if you will. I don't think it's as easy. I mean, maybe we flush quickly to 20, but but generally bear markets don't end this quickly. So I think it's gotta be a little bit more drawn out. Um, I think if you look at past bear markets in general, it's taken about 12 months from the peak on Bitcoin, for instance, to get down to its low before then it goes choppy sideways for about six months before it starts to kind of increase. And we're, you know, if we look at November being the high, we're still quite a ways away from November now when, when a potential low could be put in. An article in the Wall Street Journal on Monday hinted at a 75 basis point rate hike by the Fed at the conclusion of its two-day closed door meeting Wednesday. This leaves traders fearing monetary tightening throughout the year with no break, as Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic suggested earlier this month, temporarily buoying crypto markets. Economists at Goldman Sachs now are forecasting 75 basis point rate hikes for both June and July, 
followed by a 50 basis point increase in September, plus a 25 basis point hike in November and in December. Investors should be braced for volatility and sticky correlations at least in the coming days, arcane researchers wrote. As a result, the Bitcoin fear and greed index reached 8, signaling extreme fear. While the market has been in extreme fear territory for the 56th consecutive month, this level hasn't been seen since March 2020. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.